Jeez, that's intense. All right, it's a banana. It's it's banana. Oh, goodness! If I ask for banana, that's what I get. This is monkey juice. One and a half ounces of dark rum, half an ounce of Irish cream, and half an ounce of banana liqueur. It smells like bananas, and it tastes like rum. Go figure. I don't have any kids, but I'm not a cheap whore. Ugh! Damn. I, I don't know what to say. Cut this lemon in half. I'm gonna juice it. I'm gonna give it a nice juicing. Juicing into, it says just one half a lemon. So I'm gonna one half a lemon it. And I'll put it in my cocktail shaker. And actually, I'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to throw some ice into this thing. I'm on break. One half a lemon juice. My cocktail shaker. Just going to get all squeezed. All right. Squeezed and squuzzed. Squeezing and the squuzzing. Cool. I did that. Next, I need a lemon twist. Add the juice of half a lemon and iced tea. It says to create iced tea. So I actually made some iced tea according to the recipe in this book. It's actually insanely easy. You just take English breakfast tea, you boil it, add a bit more sugar, you put some lemon juice in there, let it come down to the simmer, and that's that. It's like lemonade, but it's iced tea, which is Ulmer Palmer, basically. It's iced tea and lemonade, and it calls for an ounce and a half of that, so I prepared that ahead of time. It's very, very, very lemony. It's very Ulmer Palmer, Arnold Palmery. Smells like tea. Tastes like English breakfast, and yeah, lemon juice, like lemonade, so. Take one and a half ounces of that, pour that as carefully as I possibly can into here. Whoop. It's one and a half into my shaker, which I've got to the side. I put that at a different angle, there we go. Trying my best is to. I figured I'd put on a bit of a performance. I do like to perform, it's my favorite thing to do. Then, this is that. Use a bar spoon. Ice cubes pour bourbon over the ice. Whoop, I forgot to pour the bourbon. I'm just using this bourbon. It's in a 10 high sour mash bottle. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think it's sour mash. I had it a bit last week and it's definitely not sour mash whiskey. So I'm just going to guess it's bourbon. That's my guess. I'll pour that. Boop into my shaker and i'll put that little thing back on you can tell it's cheap why thing well maybe it's not cheap i may have just uh changed the bottle it says oh is this one stirred in the glass with ginger ale whoops look at that i don't even need my cocktail shaker look at that i stir it in the glass i'm not shaking this one the things i thought i knew i was incorrect and i just Stir that in here for a bit. Most of the golden afternoon. This is not a good glass for shaking. It really isn't. I'm sorry. A good glass for stirring. It's not. It's kind of jagged around the edges and stuff. See, that tastes pretty good, and it tastes like whiskey and lemon juice. And then what we add to kind of top things off. My book, my book got a little cold. Oh well. We fill the rest up with ginger ale. I've got a nice Canada Dry. It sits around for this very purpose. We're using cocktails. Woo! Spicy! I pour the rest up with ginger ale. A little spritz in action there. To garnish this drink over here, I am going to add a nice flamboyant display of mint leaves. And for that, I need something to get the mint leaves off of the mint plant, which I have sitting in this little corner over here because I finally bought myself some nice mint. I like that. I'll just kind of puck them off my finger. There's a mint leaf. That's a good one. There's a mint leaf. That's a good one. Collect a couple of mint leaves. There's mint leaves. No, the mint leaf. Let's go. Ah, let's do one more. Got plenty of mint here. Plenty of mint. The mint is fresh. It has cell walls. That's science, baby. And now... You want to get that mint, you want to express it, so I'm going to give it a little spank. That's pretty weird. But now, my hands smell incredibly like mint, and it's great. So now, I'm going to take this little bouquet that I just eviscerated with my hands, and kind of lay that on top of my drink. 
Oh, nicely. Now, my drink smells like mint. And lemon, and Palmer, and Arnold. It smells like Arnold. And that's the golden afternoon, consisting of one half the juice of a lemon, ha one and a half ounces of bourbon whiskey, or whatever whiskey was in that bottle, because I'm... I don't know at this point. Uh, half an ounce, ounce and a half of the iced tea mix, which was just English breakfast tea, some lemon juice, sugar, and water, and the like of it. And fresh ginger ale with, it says one sprig of fresh mint, but I went crazy because I like mints and I literally haven't touched this plant since I bought it three weeks ago, so. And that's my golden afternoon inspired by the Alice in Wonderland cocktails all in the golden afternoon. Full leisurely we glide. For both our oars, with little skill, thy little arms are plied. Let's go. Bar, I'm gonna make another cocktail, because I run out, and I've had two so far. So we're going for it. This next cocktail that I have prepared, it's not prepared. I mean, I did do some preparation work for it, is called the Cobra's Fang. And it comes, actually, this one did, this one required a lot of prep work. And where is my tiki book? Where's my book at? Oh no! Where's my book at? Excuse me, I need to go find my book. I don't know where to put my book. There you are. It's on top of the printer. This is a book that I was actually talking about the other day while I was on stream. Yeah, I actually just bought it the other day. And it has tiki cocktails. Tiki cocktails are pretty cool. They have a lot of very interesting ingredients to them. And by, excuse me, interesting, what I mean is they have, like, special, like... You gotta make things for them. I'll explain that in a moment. The book that I'm uh, the, the book that I'm drinking, the cocktail that I am making and giving a taste is called the Cobra's Fang. And the Cobra's Fang uses a couple of really special ingredients. And by special, I mean like I've never used them in a cocktail before. They require actually preparatory work to make. One of the special ingredients is called falernum, and falernum is like a rum syrup type thing. You take equal parts of the highest proof rum that you got, you mix it with simple syrup so it's sugary and it's in high in alcohol. You mix those two together and you steep it kind of like you would with tea with allspice berries and vanilla bean or various other things. But most importantly, it's the allspice and the lime zest. You had to, I had to zest three whole limes for this particular cocktail for the flannel alone. And it comes out smelling super limey super rummy honestly not as much all spicy as you may think so that's the flare with this as well as spice simple syrup and you can make any type of simple syrup that you want really you just put stuff inside of it as you're boiling it up you can make like a ginger syrup which is just just ginger syrup pretty much any just syrup in general you just make it kind of like a in the simple style i'll keep this book open and i will begin creating this cocktail over here and this one is shaken so i will accurately use my shaker this time please excuse me i'll go grab some ice and put it into the cocktail shaker as i go over here and grab my ice and i sneakily grabbed something else too which i hope i hope you didn't see so the first thing that I will add to this is one and a half ounces of aged rum. Technically, I don't have an aged rum. The closest thing I have is I figured age would add some funk to it, so I have grabbed my Plantation 3-star rum here. It adds a little bit of interestingness to a cocktail. So I will add one and a half ounces of that. I can barely see in this, I can barely see in this light. Wowza. All right. One and a half ounces of that. Put that to the side. It smells... Smells great. Very nice smelling. Almost banana-y. It kind of smells like bananas. I wanted to use it on my banana cocktail before, but I didn't because it called for dark rum. And this isn't dark rum. Next, I will add a qu uh, three quarters of an ounce of overproof rum. I do have overproof rum over here. It is Gosling's. It's the dark rum before, before but now it's, it's flammable. So I will add that. Three quarters of an ounce of that. I will excuse my slouching stature. Three quarters of an ounce of that into the glass. My thing about over there. That's my overproof rum. And then uh, half an ounce of lime juice, meaning I gotta take a lime over here, do a squeezy, do a little squeeze, cut this lime up, see 
probably get a half an ounce from potentially the whole line. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Put the lime in there. Get a half an ounce of this guy. We'll squeeze it. Let's see about that. Did I get half an ounce? Uh, I gotta keep going. I think I'll need the other half of the, uh, I think I'll need the other half of the thing. I will. I'll need another half an ounce of it. A little bit more from the other half of the lime. I love the way limes smell. They smell so limey. Very, very nice. Put that on there. That's my half an ounce of lime juice. Put that in there. Next, I will need half an ounce of orange juice in place of orange. I have clementines. They're closely related. I could get the orange juice from the fridge, but that ain't fresh. That ain't fresh at all. I like my orange juice. I've got a live studio audience. My name is Anna. Technically, I've got a live studio audience with the people out there. Hello, live studio audience. Half an ounce of orange clementine juice thing. Let me get that a squeeze. Will I get half an ounce from this half? Oh, I'm so close! Everything that's going on right now. Same. Hello there, Vio. How are you? We're making cocktails! <laughs> it's super professional. I feel like they're making fun of you. Well, I mean, this is not professional at all. Yeah, he's except using... Except you mean, perhaps, perchance, perchance. You mean professional as in the attire. And actually, this is not professional by any sense of the word. This is cosplay. It's cosplay. I love cosplay. That's half an ounce of my orange juice, clementine juice thing. Oh my god, you know what I forgot? I still have my really shitty attempt at a lemon twist over there that I should have put in my other drink. Here. This is for my other drink. There we go. I got it in the glass. Yeah, see, see it landed in the glass. No, you did not. Yes, it did. It's behind the desk. Yeah, it did. You failed. It's like 3 a.m. over there. Oh my god. Woke up from nothing. Got notification they were streaming. <laughs> yeah. You probably got one of the three notifications because the first time things were going great. I made a cocktail. I played a game. It was wonderful. Then, upon my next break, I went down to unplug a light. And instead of unplugging a light, I unplugged my internet. Where the hell did you throw that? So I died. I threw it behind. Where I threw it into my glass. See, nobody's going to argue with me about that. Get out of my camera. Get out of here. Get out of here. I'm trying to pick up. I'm trying to be professional here. Oh I'll God. clean it up later. Uh huh. Anyway, uh -huh. then the internet died, and then we came back on, and then OBS crashed, and we're having technical difficulties over here. It's it's pretty crazy. Anyway, I had half an ounce of orange juice that I added to there. Let's go one more time. We got the Falernum. I will repeat again. Falernum is a high proof rum. Equal parts with simple syrup. Simple syrup is merely just you take sugar and water, you boil them together. Eventually, the sugar is gone, and that's simple syrup. Put that together, you throw a couple of lightly crushed allspice berries in there, and a bunch of lemon zest. The two notifications that ignored that, I'm glad you ignored it. That was exactly what I was hoping you'd do. <laughs> you can just check the highlights later. Don't worry about the technical difficulties. Editing Cameron will take care of that. This is live camera. This is... Two drinks in, two high proof drinks in Cameron. He doesn't worry about that. Yeah, two anyway. drinks in. Had so it takes the full air. I had barely any spaghetti because I didn't make a lot. Anyway, I actually just made my falernum this morning. It's supposed to stick for like up to three days. Stick? Stick? Steep for up to three days. Um, it's steeped for about eight hours. So I siphoned some off and it smells oh so good. If I can get the bottle open. Oh, it like you know what it smells like? It's sm no, actually, this smells like rum and lime Ew. and allspice. What was the one that smelled? I like smell all of it, actually. That's incredible. Let's see. So, oh, I spilled shit on my book. Right, I gotta stop putting my books over here. It's fine. Let's see. It says half an ounce of falernum. So that's what we're gonna do. Half an ounce of falernum. There are a lot of ingredients. Tiki drinks, from what I understand, are very used to having a bunch of different cocktails in them. Or rather, not cocktails, but ingredients in general. That's the falernum. And in addition to that, I will put half an ounce of my spiced simple syrup, which was spiced with cinnamon, clove, and allspice. Which is a lovely combination of things. It smells... This smells like Christmas. 
That's what you get. Christmas smelling simple syrup. Half an ounce of that, put that into my shaker. Into my shaker. And now, the final ingredient for this one is a quarter of an ounce of Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. Maraschino is like a, it's like a sour, uh, like a cherry type thing. It's cool smelling. It really doesn't smell like cherries. It's, a, it's an interesting one, and a quarter of an ounce of that. I was really, when I was looking through cocktails to make for tonight, I was like, I really want something that uses this maraschino. And I found something that used the maraschino, and I was very happy with that. Very, very happy with that. Anyway, it's, uh, it's interesting. I like it. And then with that, <clears throat> excuse me, I will give it a shake, because this is a shaken drink. Do that, give it a slap. What's a party trick? Invert party trick? Yeah, can't you shake with party tricks? What do you mean party tricks? If I want to, if I want to potentially send this drink over to the ground, sure, I'll, I'll do a flip. Ooh. That's cool. That's cool. See? I'm not a professional. I don't want to make a mess. Just a hobbyist. If you're lucky, I'll send send straight into my TV. Yeah, don't hurt Anna. I like her. I don't want to hurt Anna. I don't want to hurt Anna. Yeah, that's my drink. And so I'm going to put this into a fancy little glass because it's a fancy little drink. But first what I'll do instead is I prepared some crushed ice for this, just like the book says. So I'm going to put my crushed ice in here as best as I can. Is it <laughs> crushed? Did you all froze together? Oh my god, I did. That's okay. That's why we have a bar spoon. Come on, crushed ice. Get more crushed. There we go. It's true. I crushed this last night. There we go. Super professional. Oh. Crushed ice, crushed ice, crushed ice. Are you going to have room for a drink? Of course I will. This is a weird cocktail glass. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's all I'm getting from that. Alrighty then. By the way, happy Trans Day of Visibility. Happy Trans Day of Visibility. We're visible. You're not Everybody's sure. visible. Everybody's visible. Yeah. And I'm going to strain... Does it say strain? Strain contents of shaker into a rocks glass filled with crushed ice garnished with a cobra. I don't have a cobra. Let's see how this works. Pour that into my glass. And I really hope... It doesn't overflow. Don't overflow. Don't overflow. I think there's honestly a bit more in there. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Did I get it right? Did I get it right? Ah! Too much ice. There we go. That kind of works. And this is my Cobra Spang. And now I'm going to attempt to, as best as I possibly can, create a Cobra Garnish, which is... I don't know. No, I really can't do that. See, I went to the store today and tried to find Whole Cloves, and Whole Foods did not have it, so... With, with what I got. I'm just going to cut two ends off of this orange over here. I'm going to eat the inside of it. Give it a little cut. Eat a whole orange and to peel it. I want the peel. The peel is the most, the part that I need the most. Give that a peel. Basically, I'm going to make a snake. I'm going to make a snake and I'm going to put it in the glass. But before I make the snake, i got to uncoil it. Mm, orange. Pun time. It's juicy. Excuse Four me. Four people have to watch you eating food. And I'm just gonna cut it in the shape of a snake. A snake with a little tongue hanging out. Can't really see that. I don't have a really good shot of it, but I'm trying my damnedest to make a little cobra. Well, currently, if they want to see anything, it's all behind your fruit basket. Oh no! It's okay. This is my little cobra. It doesn't have eyes, because I don't have any clothes. I can get a marker and we can put eyes on it. Here, yeah, throw me a marker. Throw me a Sharpie. Don't try this at home. Give me a Sharpie. Gotcha. Put a little dot there. I don't eat the garnish, so it's okay. Here's my little cobra. And my little cobra's gonna sit in the glass, glass like, Ooh, you wanna take a drink? 
you do. I'm gonna take a drink. drink. And that's the Cobra Spang. I'm gonna try to drink this now. I just finished chewing my Clementine. Thank you for live commentary. Oh, wow. That's something. <laughs> I wouldn't want to. It hurt my bones. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You go back to whatever you were doing. <laughs> Jeez. Forward to. So, as it turns out, there are two very popular types of fortified wines. That is port and sherry. Port, named after the seaports of which it was brought in on. Sherry, because of a mistranslation somewhere along the lines. And then there's Madeira. Madeira is a fortified wine made in the Madeira area of Portugal. And I remember going to the store with a really close friend of mine, the wine store, and I was like, hey, you know what I really want to try? I really want to try a nice port or sherry, fortified wine. And I was like, what do you got? And he was like, well, I've got a really nice Madeira. You want to try You want to, You want to get one of those? And I was like, sure. Is a Madeira closer to a port? Close to a sherry. And he was like, <laughs> no. I was like, what do you mean by no? He was like, well, it's not similar to either of them. It's completely different. And he was absolutely right about that. So miraculously, and here's another funny story. This is my 1001 book of cocktails. I did not buy this book. I found this book. I was walking um, a couple of years ago. When I still had to park my car on campus, walk back to my fraternity dorm, I would pass a house that would always have shit outside of it because they were throwing away stuff literally all the time. Coincidentally, one of my frat brothers, two of my frat brothers, nay, three of my fraternity brothers moved into that place after the events with which I will about to describe to you. They were throwing out stuff and I found a cocktail book on the side of the road. Not only did I find a cocktail book, I also found a book on solar energy and whatnot, and it was like, um, okay, I guess. I took the solar panel book, too. That's in my bookshelf somewhere. But I found this book on cocktails, and I was like, yo, this is perfect. I love cocktails. I love refrigerators, but I love cocktails. That's a meme. Anyway, in this book, I was looking for the wine, the fortified wine cocktails, and I found one that calls for Madeira specifically a, uh, a wine that I didn't realize actually had any cocktails associated with it, so I was really surprised to find it. Anyway, I've vamped for long enough. This is the Baltimore Eggnog. The Baltimore Eggnog calls for a couple of different ingredients, which I will describe to you henceforth, and I will put into my shaker. But before I put things in my shaker, I'm sorry, the first thing that I'll put in my shaker is some... Ice. It says shake it together with ice with a little milk. It says ice, so it's not a dry shake. It's a wet shake, if shakes can be wet. Can we just so use the speak. ice on the floor? There is no ice on the floor. What are you talking about? Can't you leave the crushed ice? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm crunching ice. What'd you say? Can't you leave the crushed ice on the floor? There's crushed ice on the floor, but the crushed ice, because of its higher surface area, melted a whole sh hell of a lot quicker. I'm putting in the small one so I can get the portions correct. Are you sick? The ice Ow. stuck to the bottom. I have no idea why that did that. Anyway, <clears throat> so the Baltimore eggnog calls for an egg. Which I'm really happy I didn't step on because I had it on the floor. Anyway, this calls for an entire egg. Please note, the risk of salmonella is real. Get yourself pasteurized eggs before making any sort of eggnog. Any sort of eggnog. Please protect yourself. That's disgusting. Good thing I have a towel. It's eggy. The next ingredient calls for a tablespoon, a teaspoon of sugar, which I have already put into this little finely, finely sized Gerber container for baby food. Don't ask why I have baby food in my partner, uh, my apartment. You can ask my beautiful partner, fiance, for that. She can answer. She's actually watching right now. Hi, live studio audience. Hello. Ah. Pear Gerber is fine. It tastes just like applesauce. Gerber tastes great. Pear. Okie dokie. The next ingredient I have here is three measures of Madeira. I have my Madeira wine right here. And if I may describe to you for a moment what distinguishes Madeira from port or sherry. Madeira smells like a sugary brown sugar rum. 
And, I mean, I'm not going to taste it right now. I mean, I, I could. Don't drink out of the bottle. It kind of tastes like a fig... Fig whiskey. What if I it tastes like that? vanilla from the... Uh, from the... What's the term? Oak casts. American oak casts. Anyway, this recipe calls for three measures of that, so I'm going to do a two-ounce pour of the Madeira, which I'm so happy I'm actually going to make a cocktail with. I'm super excited. And then one measure on the other side. Yeah. You just poured a shit ton of it. I did, and it's on my phone, so who cares about it? Anyway, that's going to get sticky. That's why I have my towel. Your egg towel? This is drink number four. What did you expect? You thought I wasn't going to, like, spill things? I wipe off my phone. Perhaps I should put my phone in a more, less precarious location. I'll need to wash my hands after this. Yuck. Anyway, that's my Madeira. And I'm going to seal it off because it's very nice. And I want it to stay for a while. Preserve it with a little inner gas container. That's science, baby. After the three measure Madeira, we have one half a measure of brandy. The only thing that I have in my collection that I can even consider to be brandy is Laird's Applejack. It is distilled from apples. This is the only Applejack of its kind. Yeah, and that's all. That's what I got. So, Applejack. So it's gonna taste a little apple-y. There's plenty of different types of brandy. This is an apple brandy, technically speaking. Um, there's history on Applejack. This is the only Applejack still around, according to the Google searches that I conducted. And then after that, we take half a measure of dark rum, and I have dark rum around here somewhere. It's not the overproof kind. I need to find it. Where's my dark rum? Did you lose it? No, I have the overproof over here, but that's not the right one. That's overproof. I don't want to kill myself. Where's the other dark rum? Where are you? Is it on are top you of sure it? You took it out? Goslings. It's on the couch. <laughs> half a measure of that. I plan to. I'll sit over here and watch. I might need more dark rum after this. Half a measure of dark rum. Gallon for it. Don't worry, we can go to the new liquor store. Then, I shook the first five ingredients together with a little bit of milk. I have milk down here somewhere. Did you put the milk in? I literally bought milk just for this purpose. Let me shake it a little bit because it's a little nasty. A little bit of milk. What is in there? Oh god, that's an egg. Well, that's an egg. This is technically an eggnog. This is an eggnog. Do you like eggnog? I do love eggnog, but do I don't think know. I've actually had a drink which includes the eggnog. Oh, thank you. Back, oh, in, thank the you. back in the fridge. Mm -hmm. My dear is just helping me today. Anyway, to break up the yolk and literally everything else, I'm going to give it a shake. It says shake, it says shake. I'm going to double strain this one. If you're lucky, I will lose grip on my shaker and send it straight into my television. Let's not do that. Should that be a channel points redemption? <laughs> no. Anyway, I hope that works. What am I supposed to work in here? Let's go with it. Oh, yeah. Mm. Smells like eggs. Anyway, that gets double strained. For obvious reasons. Strain into a large tumbler topped with grated nutmeg. Air milk ice grated nutmeg. I'll put it in my glass. I have a strainer. I have another strainer. That's how we do it. This is the Baltimore eggnog. I also pour into here right now. No close up. Sorry, I'm not a professional. I double strain that into my the tallest glass that I have. It's eggnog. Shut up. And then shat on it with like a bunch of like milk. Well, I'm happy that you think so, dear, because it does not indeed smell like somebody shot uh, shat on it. No, actually. Actually, it just smells like something sweeter because it is garnished with some grated nutmeg, which I found some whole nutmegs today. Nutmegs are giant nut things. Do you want grated nutmeg? We have grated nutmeg. No, I'm going to ground some fresh nutmeg, you heathen. Why can't we just use the nutmeg in the... Never mind. Nutmeg. You're a heathen. You're a heathen. Oh, yeah, it did. And it smells awesome, so shut your mouth. That's rude. 
Anyway, nutmeg doesn't like to stay in the container. It came with one of those containers where you're supposed to, like, grate it out. And, like, why would you do that? These are... They're like balls of stuff. I can't sift that out of a container. So what's the point? And I can't close it either. Please. Please. You're right. You're drunk. No, I'm not. You're drunk. I don't drink. I'm tipsy. Absolutely. And this is the Baltimore eggnog made with, as I will repeat once more, and I'll be, by the way, um, later on when I post this video afterwards for the backup, I'll be making sure to put like the recipes in the comments below in case you're interested in checking those out. Because honestly, I think the cocktails are the most important part of this video. Catch the highlights. The Baltimore eggnog, which uses an egg, a teaspoon of sugar, three measures of Madeira, fortified wine, half a measure of brandy, half a measure of dark rum, milk, ice, and grated nutmeg to garnish. That is my drink over here. This is drink number four of the night. It smells like nutmeg. I've never smelled nutmeg before tonight, so... Yes, you have. I've used it. Ooh, have you really? Yes. It's got a nice little froth on the top. Tastes like milk. It tastes like Madeira, mostly. Madeira, it's got that... It's figgy. It's calm with the milk. It tastes like fig... If I had to describe it, it tastes like fig cream with... What else is in there? Brandy? There's a little bit of, like, effervescence, like, an air to the mouth from the brandy because of the alcohol content of that. That as well as the rum as well. To be perfectly honest, I don't really taste the rum a lot in there. It kind of gets mellowed out. So, I think, but, I mean, mostly it tastes like Madeira. There's six measures of Madeira in there. Of course it tastes like Madeira. And like I said before, Madeira smells like rum. It tastes like fig and whiskey. Whiskey, and what I mean by whiskey is it tastes like it's been fermented in an oak barrel. Oak barrel meaning it's going to taste a little bit like clove, maybe a little taste like vanilla, something almost Christmassy like that. And it goes really, really well with the milk combination. And, uh, yeah. I like it. It's milky. What else is in there? I can definitely taste the egg. The egg is distinct. The yolk. If you're not into eggnog, would not recommend. Anyway, and that's all my cocktails that I've prepared for the evening. Um, depending on what happens afterwards, it may warrant another one, but we'll see. Until then, I think it's actually back to Valhalla time. <laughs>